Is there a war coming in the Middle East? Are we headed toward a one-world government, a one-world religious system? Will America be attacked again? Do ancient prophetic texts warn of the time we are living in? Are we in the last days, the time of Jacob's trouble, the end of the world as we know it? And what are the increase of UFO sightings? When we may disagree as to what is causing the phenomena, we can agree that it is real, burgeoning, and not going away. Is this the coming great deception that ancient prophecy warns us about? Does time seem to be accelerating? Join me, your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, as we explore these and other riveting and stimulating topics. This is Acceleration Radio. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Welcome to yet another episode of Acceleration Radio. Lots to talk about. As always, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to it on YouTube and every place else that we post this stuff. Um, here's the deal. I just want to get right into it this this, um, in fact, this blog, for me anyway, is, is one of an all-time high. We've had um, over 8,000 people today, I guess, just jump on the blog. Usually you run about between 3,000 and 5,000 people a day coming to the blog. That is lamarjuli.wordpress.com. Last couple of days since I posted this, um, the Charlie Charlie Challenge contacting the demonic, we've had well over um, about 15,000, even closer to 20,000 people um, come and, and, and read what's going on and check out the links and look at for themselves. Um, thank you for everyone who made me aware of this because I was not aware of it. Someone sent me some links and, and um, of course, I hopped on there uh, and, and checked it out and wrote the following blog. The bottom line, folks, is this. Have you heard of the Charlie Charlie Challenge? It's the latest social media craze to go viral. The challenge is a cross between Bloody Mary and Ouija, and the participants try to summon a demon named Charlie. Here's the warning, folks, and I talked about this in the blog. Um, if you follow the links, I would not go and watch it because what you're doing is partaking uh, in a ritual. You're actually, you know, as they're doing Charlie, Charlie, and and and, and su trying to summon this thing. Uh, you're just by watching it, um, you're you're participating in it. So if you want to, if you do want to watch it, you pray before, pray afterwards, and why it's going on, you rebuke the thing. Um, in the name of Jesus, I did not watch it. I don't. I don't want to watch it. But this is the deal. The spirit of a living God clearly says that in the latter times, the end of time, the last days, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Now, here's something to think about. This, of course, is written by this this guy by the name of Timothy about two thousand years ago. It was a letter, and he's writing, and and actually, it's Paul, and he's and he's writing to Timothy and saying, hey, look, and, and this is a prophecy. Uh, he's saying, the Spirit clearly says that in the latter times, what Spirit? The Spirit of the living God says that in the latter times. What is the latter times? The end of days. Where are we now? We're in the end of days. Some will abandon the faith. What faith? The faith of Christianity. Hello? Where are we now? And follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. This is where we are. This is where we are. The prophecy of Bob was written thousands of years ago and has been collecting dust in our Bibles, i.e. the guidebook of the supernatural, for almost two millennia. Now, in 2015, the latest internet craze is the Charlie Charlie Challenge. Those foolish enough to engage in this are getting a lot more than they bargained for, as this is yet another way to open the door to the demonic. The problem is that the kids have no idea what they are getting into. Last year at Christmas time, a number one item being sold in the stores were Ouija boards. And you, there's a link there which tells you the whole deal. The manufacturers of the Ouija boards even made pink boards for the girls. When I was in my early 20s, I engaged in the Ouija board with two friends. We were sitting in a room and our hands were on the planchette. The planchette is the, um, like the teardrop um, shaped item that's got three uh, legs on it essentially and you hold that and it, it begins to move by itself um, uh, when I was there let me go back so that was that's what we were doing we we're holding on to the planchette to the left of me was a white wall the room suddenly grew very cold and a black hole appeared in the wall just as the planchette spelled out the name Ashtaroth at the time none of us had ever heard of that name we threw the board to the floor and ran out of the room terrified this was a decade before I became a Christian I have since learned who Asheroth was, is. In the 1960s, the Western world had the greatest influx of occult literature and Eastern mysticism in modern times. Russ Dizdar, uh, a good friend and colleague, and we'll be speaking together uh, very shortly 
at the Nephilim Mounds Conference. I'll talk about that in a little bit. It talks about this, and Russ points to, in the 60s, the greatest influx of occult literature in Eastern mysticism in modern times happened. Thousands of hippies, my generation, left their Christian roots and began to seek the so-called wisdom of the occult India and New Age gurus. It comes as no surprise that this latest occult activity has overtaken our young people. So here's a warning. Make sure your kids and grandkids understand by that engaging in this game, they're using the same techniques occultists have used for thousands of years. They are opening themselves up to interdimensional entities, i.e. demons, which I believe are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, destroyed in the flood of Noah. My, per- my people perish for lack of knowledge. In closing today's post, the Charlie Charlie Challenge is in another way to indoctrinate our youth into the demonic world. This is serious stuff and can lead to all sorts of of demonic activity, including possession, oppression, objects moving in the house, and every sort of evil manifesting. When we held the first Nephilim Mounds concert, the pastor who holded us told us of demonic activity all through Nir Kahaya and how he was ill-equipped to deal with it. The demonic is real, and their prophetic warnings should be heeded to the utmost. Have your kids learn about putting on the armor of God and if they are confronted with this game, have them rebuke it in the name of Jesus and leave the area immediately. What was written will come to pass. What was foretold will unfold. And folks, it is unfolding in ways, quite frankly, that I've never seen. So here we have 2015 and we've got Charlie, Charlie. Oh, innocent came. Just just call the demon Charlie and have it manifest. And, uh, you know, who knows what else will happen. Unbelievable. Um, we are now in our fifth episode of Acceleration TV. More coming about that. We're very excited about it. Of course, America Stonehenge. Folks, uh, if you have not checked out the video, um, Acceleration TV, episode number five, America Stonehenge, check it out. It is an, it is an amazing site located in New Hampshire. I was there several weeks ago uh, after the conference up in Maine. Uh, Baja, but with some clam chowder for you there, L.A., and um, it was just a fantastic time uh, to, to meet Dennis Stone and, and spend three or four hours uh, just roaming all over the site. It is like all these sites, in, unless you're there, boots on the ground, all the pictures, all the videos in the world just don't do it justice. But check it out, America Stonehenge from Acceleration TV. Um, that's part one. Part two is being produced now. We should have that up for you sometime next week. Um, ISIL. Jordan and Syria commentary. Number four, Assad pulls Air Force out of Deir ez-Zor. The third Syrian base surrendered to ISIL. Um, this is something that the mainstream media is not talking about. Uh, I would. I had a, a conversation with a, a gentleman last night um, who is deep in, um, let's say, Middle Eastern things and has sources of, of intel that we don't. And he confirmed this, that Assad has just lost the uh, the third Syrian airbase, um, which basically surrendered to ISIL. Assad's days are numbered. It's just a question of when uh, he will finally be toppled. And, of course, he is, he is the Iranian proxy in the area along with Hezbollah. ISIL is the rogue element, uh, more than likely created by the CIA. Even Rand Paul talked about that. Uh, to topple Assad, and they have gone about their business, except that ISIL realizes that, well, why work for these guys? We can just set up our own caliphate. And, of course, that's what we see all throughout the Middle East. Um, I talked to uh, this man last night, and he told me, remember, Watchers 9 is Days of Chaos, and um, in my book coming out on September, Days of Chaos, he said that's that's a very astute name, for what is going on uh, in the Middle East. He said, we haven't seen anything like this in a thousand years in the Middle East. So while we get the problem in this country, uh, Hillary Clinton nonsense, uh, Bruce Jenner's sex change nonsense, deflate gate, where the balls really deflated, and on and on it goes. Um, just, you know, the clown of the week and never any real news. The Middle East is is imploding um, what's going on over there is absolutely unprecedented, unprecedented. Record flooding, record heat, business as usual, or something more. What about what's going on in Texas and Oklahoma? Is it really uh, controlled 
Is it geoengineering? Are they spraying the skies? Are they are they creating this? Did they create the, the drought in California? <clears throat> are they creating the the monsoon that we see happening in Texas and Oklahoma, folks? I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Conspiracy theories run rampant. I was with uh, a friend of mine today, and we were looking at the chemtrails, what I call chemtrails, and he was trying to tell me that, oh no, it's a new fuel that jets use. Well, I, I point out to him, well then, well then, why is it that we see the trails go on, and then they go off. Well, what happens with the fuel? So that argument doesn't work for me, because when you look up, you can actually see the places where, where, the, where the jet turns on the tanks and starts spraying the sky. And why is it that this fuel lingers in the air? If it is fuel, why does it linger in the air and slowly dissipate and, and, and create a silver film over the entire sky? What the heck is going on here? What are we looking at? There was a link today, Jihad in Los Angeles. Folks, are you aware, again, different intel sources talked about there are 50,000, estimated 50,000 Hezbollah and Hamas terrorists all through South America, South and Central America into Mexico. What is Jade Helm? What is really going on with Jade Helm? Notice where it's going to be held, all on the border states. San Diego, New Mexico, Texas, other parts of Florida. What's going on with this? Folks, look, there's a drug trade. The drug trade comes up through the southern border and other places by the cartels. We have information, and I vetted this last night, that Hezbollah has made an agreement <clears throat> with the drug cartels. And this one source told me that there are approximately 40 tunnels already from Mexico into uh, and underneath the, the southern border. 40 tunnels. And the similar, the same way the tunnels were made in Gaza, the same crew are making these tunnels um, to infiltrate America. Look, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm very alarmed by what I see with James Helm. I, I don't I don't trust uh, my own government at this point. I love our Constitution. Please don't misunderstand me. As I blogged about last week, that, that clip showing what got Judge Napolitano fired. And he spelled it out in a five-minute monologue that was just absolutely not only astute, but just such an incredible overview of where we are as a country. Ann Coulter has just written a book called The Browning of America. And while that might seem like a racist statement, the bottom line is this. You can't export poverty from South, Central, and Mexico. You can't do this. Export the poverty into this country and fill this country with people who have no idea of what our Constitution is, who come from a very poor way of life, and they're just happy to be here. Are you kidding me? And live the American dream. It would be great if everybody could live the American dream. I get it. My ancestors came over on the boat at the last, at the waning years of the 19th century into the 20th, 1898. And they came through Ellis Island. I mean, I've actually seen pictures of all this stuff, of the documents. And they were all Italians. And they all came over and they did it legally. And they went to school and they learned about the Constitution. Heck, my grandfather on my mother's side was a commissioner of Newark, Newark New Jersey. Guy was a, a lawyer and a judge. I mean, that's where that's where that's where he rose to. Nobody gave him anything. He got there on his own. You didn't make that. Excuse me, Mr. Obama. My grandfather made that. Yes, he did, sir. And I am insulted by that statement. My grandfather made his way, and he was elected, and he ran for office, and people voted for him. But he loved our Constitution, and he knew the law. All that's gone. All that all that's gone. The Browning of America